Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. With the current health crisis sweeping across the planet, many people are understandably focused on the idea of preventing themselves or their family members from coming down with COVID-19. They're doing this in a variety of ways, from personal protective gear like masks and gloves, to trying to stay out of public places, hand washing, not touching your face, all these types of things. Even here at the house, whenever there's a package or a piece of mail that comes in, we sanitize that before it comes into the house. Those are all worthy things to do. That's what we talk about on prepping channels, trying to avoid problems, trying to head things off, see things coming, and try to take protective measures for yourself and your family. But there's another level of preparedness that people oftentimes don't talk about, and that is the idea of what happens if you fail? Many of us, including myself, may very well fail and we're gonna come down with this disease and is that something that you're planning for? I know that I host a prepping channel. I'm shooting myself in front of a bunch of preps. It's obviously my goal to try to avoid coming down with this, but everybody has different situations and for my personal life, this isn't something that I talk about you know, really on my channel, but there are specific elements of my personal life that make myself and my family fairly it's fairly likely that we're gonna get this disease into the house. I'm controlling as many vectors as I can, but there's one in particular that I, I can't control, though I wish that I could. And um, that, you know, your, your, your fortress is only as strong as the screen door that you have left open and unlocked in the back. So uh, in addition to trying to control as many vectors as we can of disease and trying to prevent ourselves from getting it by not doing things like that, we're also preparing for the idea that we may get it. And my situation is my situation. Other people have other situations. Maybe you work in the medical field and you are, you know, in the front lines and it's very likely that you might be exposed to it. Maybe you, uh, you know, work in some other kind of profession where you are uh, in uh, contact with other people. Maybe you have some kind of other special circumstance that makes you, you know, more likely than other people to necessarily contract it. If you can close your house down and just nothing in, nothing out, uh, nothing out, that would work great, but not everybody can have that level of control over their, their lives, including me. So we're planning on the idea of getting ready for, you know, once it gets into our house. One of the elements of that is trying to make it so that not everyone in the house gets sick all at once. Uh, you know, kind of planning on, you know, there's a person that's most likely to get it first, you know, hoping that you, that person can kind of start to move through the, the disease so that when other people start coming down with it, because I know, you know, you try to isolate that person as best you can, but people are going to want to care for them. It's really hard to get a negative pressure environment in your house. You can do it with having fans in the windows uh, and, you know, blowing air out and everything, but it's difficult to control it. So you should really plan on the idea of it kind of cascading through your house. But it, like the healthcare system, if you can avoid having everyone be sick all at once, it can make a really terrible situation, slightly less awful. So, uh, you know, here at our house, we're trying to work things so that, you know, one person would get sick first, then, you know, the other person would get sick, and then the third person would get sick. Uh, in our house, that's probably River gets sick first, shows mild symptoms. I'm probably the next likely person to get it in the chain. I'm his dad. I'm in constant close contact with him. If he's sick, I'm going to be taking care of him. I'll try to take protective measures, but, you know, COVID-19 is really infectious. There's a really high degree of chance that I'm going to get that. The last person in our line that we're hoping would get infected would be Amber. She's uh, kind of self-segregating uh, a little bit, kind of staying away from the, you know, the rest of the house. So hopefully if the virus gets in, it'll get River, it'll get my, me, and then you know Amber would be the last one. So there'll always be somebody that will be somewhat capable of caring for the other people. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, lots of you know, gear and we have lots of medicines and things that are here on hand so that we have them in the case of getting ill. Things like, uh, you know, being able to drink something with electrolytes. Uh, Hoople's Cat, which has a great channel on this, had suggested Gatorade. I'm not a huge fan of Gatorade because it's got like artificial colors in it and everything, but when you're sick, you don't really care that much about that stuff. I bought a bunch of Gatorade mix that can be mixed up. We also have different teas that are good for calming a cough, all sorts of medicines, fever reducers, uh, you know, all the types of things that you would want, you know, if you have a cold, a flu, things to help you sleep, all that sort of stuff. We have all that stuff on hand, planning for the idea that, you know, while we're putting in our best effort to try to keep coronavirus out of the house, in all likelihood here at this house, due to our specific circumstances, we're probably going to fail. And we want to try to uh, have our best chance at surviving that. In addition to planning for ourselves, we're also planning to want to not spread it out to other people. Once it comes into the house, uh, 
people are going to have it with it and be able to spread it without knowing about it. My dad has been helping me out on a building project that I have going on. If you're interested in that series, here's a link to it. Uh, it's about building our, uh, my own homestead. My dad has been helping a lot on that, uh, but he is in that older demographic where it's a dice roll in terms of whether or not he or my mom would survive it. So starting at this point, uh, you know, I'm going to ask him not to be coming and helping anymore unless the weather's really nice and we can work outside or something like that where we're not clearly sharing the same air uh, and you know we might do that but I'm also planning for the idea of trying not to spread it out to other people given that you know we're a really likely sort of um, uh, collection area <laughs> unfortunately for it so that's something I wanted to throw out there just the idea of thinking about you know trying to prevent it but don't forget about the idea of preparing to deal with it if your prevention methods fail. And for a lot of us, they're going to. And you don't want to be left without all the supplies that you would want to have on hand in case you do get sick. That's good. I hope that none of us get sick, but that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's going to hit some of us. And I'm just asking for us all to think about it so that we can be prepared as we possibly can. So if and when that does happen, it's not as bad as it would be if we weren't prepared for actually getting it. That's it, good luck, and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.